Good morning to you all. Thank you again for being here at this service for uh, a brother in Christ, a friend to very many, Steve Vincent. Hope you've enjoyed listening to uh, the music that's been playing as our prelude that is Steve, that has been both on the piano and on the organ, and we will have some opportunity to hear him play yet again during this service this morning. My name is Pastor Malcolm Light, and I am the senior pastor here at the Reedley Mennonite Brethren Church. And it has been my privilege to know Steve over the last three or so years that he has been in our area. He has played our organ and our piano many, many times, as I've shared with some folks even this morning. It was always just a joy to watch his hands move and to just see the magic that he would be able to do and the praise that he would be able to bring from those instruments. And one of the things that I had appreciated about Steve most, and I've shared this also with our own Pastor Randy, who is our worship leader, because I see these qualities in him too, is Steve obviously loved the music and he wanted the music to be as near to perfect as it could be every single time. And it was. One of the things that I loved and appreciated the most about Steve is while the music was important, devotion, worship, praise, bringing glory and being focused upon God was his highest goal. And Steve made that clear every single time he would play, every single time we would talk how important it was that we are focused in everything that we are doing upon the Lord Jesus Christ. And as I was thinking about that and thinking about opening this service, two verses of scripture came to my mind that I wanted to share with you this morning as we, as we ourselves come and not only come to celebrate and to remember Steve, but also come to worship his God. Be, to be reminded that Steve is not with us anymore. And that is something that is very sad. This is far too soon in our reckoning of time. And yet we rejoice because Steve knows the Lord Jesus Christ, is known by the Lord Jesus Christ, and is now in his presence and will be there forevermore. The scripture that came to my mind was from Psalm 98, which says, Oh, sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous things. His right hand and his holy arm have worked salvation for him. The Lord has made known his salvation. He has revealed his righteousness in the sight of the nations. He has remembered his steadfast love and faithfulness to the house of Israel, and all the ends of the earth have seen the salvation of our God. Therefore, make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Break forth into joyous song and sing praises. Sing praises to the Lord with the lyre, with the lyre and the sound of melody, with trumpets and the sound of the horn, make a joyful noise before the King, the Lord. And the other is from Colossians chapter 3. And as Paul is speaking, he says, Above all these put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. That's the Steve that I knew. Steve that would speak and play beautiful songs, but all to draw us into the throne room of God. Would you pray with me? Father God, you are the Lord of all creation. You are the giver of life. You are the redeemer and the savior. And Father, we do come to you today thankful. I come to you thankful for my brother Steve's life, for the gifts that you gave to him that he generously used with so many people in so many different ways. But Father, we also come today grieving we come today in some sadness. We miss Steve. And so, Father, I pray that your grace will be abundant and sufficient. I pray, Father, that your comfort, that your Holy Spirit will surround those today 
that, again, while we rejoice that Steve knew you, that today where there is just some sadness and grief at this loss, some heaviness of heart, we recognize that you are close to the brokenhearted, that you are the one who saves those who are crushed in spirit. And so, Father, would you tenderly bring that care today? As we sing, as we listen, as we hear stories, and as we also just share over a meal with one another about Steve and his impact on our lives. May again, Father, would you bring to mind the ways in which he has also brought us before you and enabled us to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray this in Jesus' name. I invite you to look on the back of your program today. We'll sing together, O oh God, our help in ages past.
so I will miss that very much. I would like to share some of his life, but just know that these brief words cannot possibly convey what he meant to many of us and the lasting impact that he had on our lives. Stephen Lloyd Vincent was born in Riverside, California, January 1st, January 10th, 1951, and he passed away in Reedley, California on November 11th, 1918, at the age of 67. He is survived by his brother Mike, a niece and a nephew, four cousins and their families, and many, many, many friends and colleagues. He was a fourth generation native Californian who was raised in Riverside by his parents, Lloyd and Eileen Vincent, along with his brother Mike. He attended Bryant Elementary, Central Junior High, and North High in Riverside, where he was an honor student, go figure, and then he received the remainder of his education at Biola University, Whittier College, Fresno State, and Fresno Pacific University. He held academic uh, membership in the American Guild of Organists and was a member of the American Guild of English Handbell Readers. Stephen was many things, an ordained pastor, minister of music, kindergarten teacher, bookkeeper, adjunct music faculty at Taylor College, and former retirement home administrator. He was also music director, pianist, and organist for large and small churches and choral groups, including being one of the pianists for the Catherine Kuhlman Choir at the Shrine Auditorium in Los Angeles and the assistant organist at the famed Angelus Temple in Echo Park. He began learning the piano at the age of six and also played the cello in high school. So many of you have noticed some photos on the memory, on the memory table out front, and one of them is of a very young Stephen sitting at a piano. He received Christ as his Savior and was baptized when in high school and started the first Bible club at North High School. And he was also the youngest music minister ever in Riverside at the age of 16. Stephen was always very busy and usually involved in a full-time job as well as doing others at the same time. He was highly sought after to play for weddings, funerals, concerts, and other events. And he often said that if he could do anything in the world, it would be to play the organ. And so he found many opportunities to do that, and we are so blessed by that. He recorded CDs of sacred music with the 320 voice Kansas Mennonite Men's Chorus, and his recent CD, Give the Winds a Mighty Voice, Jesus Saves, is what you were listening to at the beginning of this service. He wrote and composed newsletters, inspirational stories for various magazines and books, many inspirational songs and hymns, as are documented on the CDs, and the Palm Village hymn sing on YouTube. Stephen was quite surprised and very humbled by the viewership of the Palm Village hymn sing on YouTube and the comments that he received from the United States and from other countries by people who had listened. Stephen was devoted to Christ, and in his service, he would lead, teach, and invite people into the worship of and relationship with the God he loved. He never judged unfairly, but guided with unconditional love and an intent to bring peace and calm. His soft-natured personality invited a diverse group of relationships in, into his life. That is very true. He loved, he laughed, he cracked jokes, and often laughed at himself. He listened, he shared his thoughts, and was faithful in prayer. He could also be quite honest about some things, like one's lack of skill in cooking, but he always offered to assist. He was a master cook who celebrated tradition by making family recipes at the many home events he would host. He opened his home to others often, nurtured the elderly and those in need, and shared stories of the past with amazing detail and hope for his future. He used the word dear as a term of endearment to those he loved, and a cheerful, well, hello there, was his standard greeting. His outstanding and noteworthy accomplishments in his ministry and music touched and influenced the lives of many. When he played the organ or piano, the room would quiet. Many of you have, I've seen many of you do that. His passion, his talent, and the music would fill the room. So be still and listen as his music and God's message inspire your heart and soul forever. He was loved deeply and will be dearly missed by his family and friends. Rest in eternal peace and the joy of our Lord, in the joy of our Lord, our beloved friend Steve. So actually the next musical piece that we're going to hear played by Stephen was also played for his mother's people.
like to invite Jim Higby to come and join us. He's going to be sharing for a brief moment. He's the executive director at Palm Village. Jim. Good morning. I'm honored to have a few minutes to share some of my memories about Steve Benson. I first had the privilege of meeting Steve almost two years ago when my tenure at Palm Village began. But even before our introduction, what stood out to me was the fact that his patio home had the greenest grass on campus. I soon learned why. He, at his, at his own expense, had installed artificial turf and it looked great. My actual introduction to Steve, however, was via a tour by Jim Duick. With my wife by my side, Steve welcomed us at the door with his cheerful smile and gladly showed us around his beautiful home. It was immaculate and spotless to say the least. Now I heard rumors that Steve had a pipe organ in his house which had caught my curiosity as I was always a fan of the organ. But this was a pipe organ in his home. Well, needless to say, within a few minutes of our tour, I asked Steve, where is this pipe organ I've heard about? And Steve immediately marched us into his music room, and lo and behold, there not only sat a piano, but the pipe organ. I was obviously surprised and very impressed and without hesitation asked, can we listen to you play? Without hesitation, he slid across the organ bench, flipped the switches, and his skillful hands began to play away. I felt as if I was in church and it was beautiful. Steve loved to share his God-given talent. While here at Palm Village, he enriched and blessed the lives of our residents and visitors in so many ways. He transformed our monthly on-campus old-fashioned hymn scene, orchestrating the musical talent of a handful of leaders, residents who live on campus, bringing back to center stage the hymns that so many of us know and love. He enjoyed surrounding himself with the talent of our residents, who also shared the love of music and worship, whether it was by piano, a song, or the reading of God's word. Because of Steve's continuous desire to share, teach, and create beautiful music, he integrated his skills with the Village Gospel Four. With Steve on the piano, four men harmoniously lifting their voices to God. Another blessing to our campus was the formation of the Palm Village Choir. Consisting of over 30 residents, all different skill sets in singing, joining together for Thursday evening chapel. To know Steve, you, under, you, had to under, you understood he had a laser-focused mentality and determination to accomplish anything. I was always intrigued when I saw Steve walking on campus. At his fast, purposeful pace, he always looked determined about something. Those of us who work or reside at Palm Village were fortunate to always get to the know, we always got to know the non-business side of him. He had a sense of humor, and I always enjoyed his candidness. He did not shy away from telling you how he felt about anything. He was a planner, maybe even years ahead, and very well organized. I remember a conversation he had with Evelyn, our administrator for the healthcare center, where he insisted that if he was ever admitted to the healthcare center, that he had to be in a private room and that no one else was to share his room. Evelyn's challenge was trying to get a word in with Steve, which was definitely fun to watch. <laughs> Summertime was Steve's least favorite season in the Central Valley. I think he wore shorts, a button-up shirt, and tennis shoes most everywhere except for attending a church function. We all know Steve was a sharp dresser, and I would get a kick how quickly he could change from a short-sleeved shirt and shorts 
into a suit and tie in what seemed like a matter of minutes. Another fond memory of Steve was his love of cooking. My wife and I recently had the privilege in sharing a dinner with him on a Sunday evening after him seeing. Steve's perfectionist mentality carried all the way to his steamed broccoli where he felt the vegetables not cooked enough. We laughed as we observed him dumping it in the garbage. His carrot cake, made from scratch though, was no laughing manner and it was amazing. Steve took pride in the way he taught music and cared for his fellow Palm Village residents. He took the time to color code the music sheets in order to emphasize music and stress certain lyrics. Every Thursday, Steve would pay a visit to our reception office and request color copies of sheet music to be made for him. Well, I soon learned of Steve's no-delay approach for disapproval of anything, which was actually a misunderstanding when I had asked our staff to minimize the use of color copying or color printing due to cost. Steve was told that color copies were no longer permitted. So as you can imagine, the next thing I know, Jeanette from our front desk informs me that Steve had a bone to pick with me. I quickly invited Steve into my office, and without hesitation, Steve laid into me that if he can't make color copies, he won't continue with the choir. <laughs> Steve showed me his colored notes he makes on the music sheets, and all I could think of was the amount of time he spent and how caring he was enough to ensure his choir was at its best. And needless to say, the color copies for the choir continued. <laughs> Steve was also a master gardener, noticeable when he saw the front side of his house. He spent countless hours planting, trimming, and keeping his bountiful plants looking beautiful all the time. There was a time this past summer that I received a telecall, telephone call from Steve. Jim, he said, I have a go for ruining my front yard. I walked to Steve's house and met him in the front of his home. He pointed out all the locations the gopher had taken residency and the plants that had been ruined by this gopher. As we stood there talking, I looked toward the ground and saw a plant leaf moving. I quickly stopped Steve in his conversation and I said, Steve, look, there's the gopher. He's coming out and he's not afraid of us. As we walked closer, we paused, and the dirt starts to move. I kept looking, and there after a minute was what appeared to be the gopher. With Steve in his nice slacks and loafer shoes, he stops on the hole. I said, what are you doing? You're going to ruin your nice shoes. To, Steve, to which Steve replied, I hate gophers, and I want him out of here. Steve then took his chewing gum, dropped it in the hole, and then filled the hole up with dirt using his nice shoe. I just shook my head and I laughed, but that was Steve, determined and laser focused. I'll never forget the evening of November 11th. I was out of town at a conference and I received a voice mail call from Bill, our independent living administrator, saying that I needed to call him immediately. I returned Bill's call and he told me that I needed to sit down as he had news to share with me. The news that Steve had passed was like someone hitting me in the chest. I asked my wife to please come to the room where I took the call because I was in shock. Although news like this is never easy, the mere fact of knowing that Steve was in the presence of our Heavenly Father gave me peace and true comfort. Heaven gained an extraordinary man, a choir director, a pianist, an organist, all whose love for Jesus was on display at all time. He was meeting face to face the authors of the hymns that he loved to sing. 
I always love when God finds the right time to bring scripture to mind during all circumstances. And he did that just for me. In Psalm 1611, David expresses that he is satisfied with God because he believed he would enjoy God forever. And it reads, You will show me the way of your life, granting me the joy of your presence and the pleasures of living with you forever. Remembering Steve and his joy for the Lord, his pleasure is now living with him forever. Welcome home, dear friend. Heaven is a little more musical now because of you. Greetings. I'm Dr. Brad Vogel, professor of music at Tabor College here in Hillsborough, Kansas, and I'm delighted to have the opportunity to say a few words about our good friend Steve Vincent. Steve came into my life and into our lives here at Tabor College uh, rather unexpectedly, uh, rather suddenly, and I think providentially. I first heard about Steve through a mutual friend, Bruce Anthony, who told me that a very talented musician in California was retired from his position there and was going to move to Hillsborough, Kansas. I said, why in the world would he do that? And Bruce replied, well, he's coming to help you. And that's exactly what happened. Steve and I struck up a very quick friendship through our mutual love of music, our love of the Lord, our, our love of using music to serve God and to serve and enrich other people. Uh, Steve became a very valuable person to us very quickly. He plugged into the church in his work with keyboard and organ. 
Uh, his value to Tabor College was, was very deep. He served as an adjunct instructor for us here on organ and church music teaching, also as our handbell director. And, and then Steve got involved with many things throughout the state. A church in Wichita he was associate organist with. He played for the Kansas Internet Men's Chorus. He was an arranger for them. So once people learned of who Steve was and what he could do, uh, he, was, he was utilized and appreciated in many ways. People know that Steve was a generous person, and I think the word generous would be the best word to use to describe him. Obviously, his talents were generous. He was very, very deeply talented in a wide range of areas. He was generous with his time. He was generous with his resources. He is very generous with his friendships. He formed deep friendships. He was incredibly supportive. Uh, he was someone that I depended upon and enjoyed immensely because of his his ability to encourage and to support the things that I did here at Taylor College. We were very surprised, very saddened to hear of his passing, and we are honored to do some things for him here at Tabor College. By the time you see this video, we will have had a service to, uh, to honor him here at Tabor through the use of the music that he loved, through choral music, organ music, and brass music, a chance just to celebrate his life in the way that I think he would have celebrated. Well, good morning. My name is Cactus Harris, and I am the uh, current dean of the San Joaquin Valley American Guild of Organists. I met Steve a few years ago when he returned to the Fresno area and again became active in the guild. I remember the excitement expressed by many of our members when he moved back from Kansas, and I soon learned why. Steve was a real go-getter. He quickly picked up the reins and volunteered to fill a vacant treasurer position in our chapter. He was impeccably organized, timely, and definitely kept us all honest. Steve joined our chapter in 1975 while he was working at a church in Visalia. Later, he served as the dean from 1988 to 1990. He was active throughout his many years in the guild, holding a variety of organist posts at many valley churches, playing in recitals, organizing concerts and events. And you could always count on him to bring something delicious to a social or a reception. I leaned on him heavily for his expertise of how things should be managed, executed, and promoted. He was an integral part of our program planning, especially our most recent hymn festivals. Not only could I count on Steve to play and raise the roof, but to have detailed instructions about the order of hymn introductions, interludes, key changes, again, all marked with those red pens and highlighters, so that everyone involved was on the same page. It goes without saying that all of us here were blessed by Steve's music. His passion for quality music and worship was obvious in everything that he played and led, from rousing gospel piano to mighty thunderous toccatas on the organ. Steve covered all the bases, all the stops, and all of the keys. He could really let it rip on the piano, and I, man, I wish I could play like that. <laughs> I'll never forget the times I had the privilege of playing duets with him. And all I could do was smile and revel in the music making as he tickled all the ivories up and down. What I admired most about his music was that it was honest. And this is kind of in the same light that Pastor Malcolm mentioned earlier. He faithfully played and sang, not for the purpose of impressing, but to exalt our Lord. I remember asking him about a time that he had played for the Hour of Power down at the Crystal Cathedral, and how exciting that must have been. His response actually surprised me. Here I would imagine a grand story about the choir, the organ, the building, a large crowd, but instead I was very humbled. He told me that with all the rules, countdowns, that it was too much showbiz and not enough authentic worship for him. Just as J.S. Bach penned on all of his music, Soli Deo Gloria, Glory to God alone, I would say this too was penned on the life of Steve Vincent. I wanted to close with a 
uh, poem by Adeline Proctor, which later was set to music by Arthur Sullivan. It's titled, The Lost Chord. Seated one day at the organ, I was weary and ill at ease, and my fingers wandered idly over the noisy keys. I know not what I was playing or what I was dreaming then, but I struck one chord of music like the sound of a great amen. It flooded the crimson twilight like the close of an angel's song, and it lay on my fevered spirit with a touch of infinite calm. It quieted pain and sorrow like love overcoming strife. It seemed the harmonious echo from our discordant life. It linked all perplexed meanings into one perfect peace and trembled away into silence as if it were loath to cease. I have sought, but I seek it vainly, that one lost chord divine, which came from the soul of the organ and entered into mine. It may be that death's bright angel will speak in that chord again. It may be that only in heaven I shall hear that great Amen. We'll now once again listen to a piece by, played by Steve in the uh, Mennonite Men's Chorus of Kansas, There Is No Greater Love.
Good morning. My name is Alvon Von Stieg. I had the privilege of uh, pastoring the St. Luke's United Methodist Church <coughs> when uh, Steve was our organist. In a sense, I, I've been, since receiving the word of his passing, been trying to think of a word that connected all the things that I read about him. I learned a lot about Steve. Uh, I knew very little about Steve when he came to our church. I think when Judy and he came to a, our Christmas Eve service and heard our organ play, he made a choice, not because of me or the church, because he wanted to play a 44 rank organ. And did he play it? Steve was quiet, he was humble. And the word I was trying to find, what connects all the things I've heard about Steve or what I learned about Steve or what I knew about Steve? And I think it was excellence with humility. Our organ had never been played well in the years I was there early. Then when Steve came, it became not magic, something more spectacular than magic. He could do anything on that organ that people shouldn't be allowed to do. <laughs> and then when he would put, go to the piano and would put, do our duets with uh, Jackie French, who was also a musician, both excellent persons and professionals, something dynamic truly did happen. We were transformed by what was taking place around two instruments and two people. I used to regret having to go to the door after I preached because that meant I, messed, I lost the path. I didn't get to hear the postlude. I didn't get to hear the music at the end. You don't want to come early to hear the music when you just sit and just absorb, receive, experience, in a sense, be a sense of wholeness coming forth from that music. And I never really can say I ever really heard an organ much or paid much attention to it till, till, till those years. And so the, for me, though, as I read all this, I, I didn't know any of this about him until Pastor Malcolm sent me some information and I read up and I, then I found out that he had hymn sings at Palm Village. So just two nights ago, I spent an hour and a half on a service of August, I think, 18, doing the whole service. And I'm watching a Steve I didn't realize was. The poise, the, the depth, the warmth, all those things. But in our church, he was, he was, his role was to be the organist. And he committed himself so fully that it's like he disappeared in one sense. It wasn't like he needed the attention. It wasn't like he needed everybody to talk about him. We, he just was. And he, 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 I'm sure people came to church not because of my sermons. But to hear Steve. And Jackie played those duets. He covered for me a lot of times. I, I got smart over the years, hopefully. And finally, I, I would choose all the hymns that we were going to play, sing, or, or, or hear. And suppose they had to match up with my messages, you know, in that dynamic moment when you finish and everything comes together and you feel so good. And over time, I, I discovered that it was better for him to choose the closing hymn than me. So when I get close to closing up, I kind of glance down at Steve and he might have a little sign, 252. And I'd say, now we're going to sing hymn 252. <laughs> and he and Jackie would crank up the piano and the organ and we went to heaven. We went to heaven. And other times, uh, Jackie reminded me when I talked with her from Colorado. And I talked, he said, the thing that impressed me about Steve, he said, Al, sometimes when you get to the end of a sermon, you'd, you'd sing something. Some Jesus, something about Jesus. Just a few words, just casual, kind of finish the sermon up. Steve was out of the pew, at the, at the piano, in instance. And Jackie screamed over the phone saying there were six sharps. And he played them all right. <laughs> Steve covered for me. So all the things, so as again, I try and look over what it is. Best I can say it's excellence with humility. When he said, if I could do one thing in my life, I'd play an organ. Wouldn't you love to have your life simple? Focus so clear that you knew exactly what, when you woke up in the day, and the day, the day was alive, but today I get to play the organ. If you're ever a preacher, and it bites into your soul, you get to wake up and say, Monday, Monday through Saturday, I'm the pastor, but Sunday I get to preach. I get to preach. Isn't that right, pastor? We'll do all the other things. So I told them a church at St. Luke's, I said on Sunday, 
Nobody comes up to me and said, the music's too, or the heater's too hot, or the air conditioning is too much, or someone wants something with me, there's a problem in this. I say, on Sunday, I just preached my soul out. I bled all over the pulpit, spit at a few people even, you know, just the excitement. But on Sunday, we're worshiping. We're not talking about what goes on to the board. We're not talking about the heater. We're not talking about air conditioning. We're talking about we come to worship. We're going to celebrate, and you're not stealing anything from me for the joy of proclaiming the word and, and the music and the worship. We worshiped, and we had fun. Life's too, life's too, life's too serious to walk through without joy. Would you agree with me? Yes or no, you can advance, you can respond. I'm, I'm a missionary, so when I say something, you, you either respond or I take up an offering. So just decide what you want, I mean. But the joy, just the joy of life, and this is what I got with Steve. I, Steve and I, when he left, when I left in 1994, and he was still there, and later he moved down to the Riverside, but Steve always sent me a birthday card, always sent me a Christmas card. And then when I was doing, living back in Georgia with a mission agency and then uh, and did a lot of travel, there was Steve, always remembered me. And when I ever come out here to preach, he'd leave wherever he's going just to come to see and we'd have a few minutes to visit. And Steve was always the same, just kind of, you know, kind of looking at you, always dressed nice, alive, very much alert. And then the last 16 years, he's been financially supporting my ministry. Every month, there's Steve Vincent's funds. Supporting my ministry, asking how it's going. Because see, Steve had a missionary heart. He was a Christian Missionary Alliance guy. You can't be a CMA and not be committed to missions. And so when we talk about all the different things that Steve, he, he had this love. In fact, when I turned on the family, uh, the hymn sing the other night, you know, he, one of the things he was so proud about was he read 25 nations are listening to your Palm Village hymn sing. And he was so excited to think that his word was going into the whole world, not just Palm Village, not just Reedley, not just California, not just U.S. It's being used and blessed and used. And I can just see his own missionary spirit. And he said, maybe we'll have more next week. The spirit of being a missionary. The spirit of what he was. Encompassed the whole world. When I look at all the different things, again, as I said, I, 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 I learned about Steve in a fresh new way. Loved him all along and his faithfulness, and his servanthood. It's real easy. Sometimes, sometimes people who are very capable can be a little bit heavy, pretty much uptight, staring at their own belly button. You know, the thing of how important they are. Seven Steve, he was a servant in that content, context. Jackie was the music leader, music coordinator. He was the organist. He played the bells. But he knew how to sub submit himself to the authority over him. And then when I read, when he got back, Tabor College must have been birth for him. It must have just been those moments when all of a sudden all of his gifts and his abilities and talents and experiences had a chance to be explored and explode across Tabor College. Imagine all the things he did, all the things he was. And this man we heard, this pastor, this professor he worked with, he just exploded wherever there was a, a moment. He, how could we make music more real? How could he make it more part? Last Sunday that, he, that I heard him play, Matt, you're there, aren't you, Matt? Uh, it was the final Sunday. Uh, St. Luke's has gone through a lot of changes, three or four different names, and now is being seated over to the Campus Bible Church, which was a great, great church. Jim Cece, great pastor. So all the changes they were going through and the crisis and difficulties, and Jim was a helpful to the, a lot of the leaders. And So that final Sunday was Mission Sunday, and I'm preaching on Mission Sunday. Because the church there supported us all these years. And so, so I got a call from Pastor Jim, and he, he, he just wanted to welcome me and all those kind of nice words. And, and, and with the transition, you kind of don't know from this Sunday you are whatever St. Luke's was, became to be known as into a new church setting and just want to know how I felt about it. And I said, praise God. Whatever it takes to reach the lost, I don't care. I don't care what you call it. I don't care what you sound like. I don't care what kind of building it is. I don't care. As long as the lost are found, then I'm in favor of it. And Jim, you're in favor of it too. So Matt, organist, and, and Steve played that Sunday. What a time. When I became president of a mission agency, we were celebrating our 10th anniversary, and Steve contacted me. Can I write you a song? 
course you can write us a song. So he took a hymn that he knew and put his own words into it about the lost and going and, and the world. His world was missions. But that Sunday, what a, what a day. And he played and, and sang that song for us that Sunday. Matt was on the organ doing a great job and he was on the piano and they just played I don't care the, I was waiting for heaven to come I felt the room tinged with a wholeness a brightness, a freshness a, a, almost a smell of beauty just by sitting there and then the final song you all played I had to stay and listen you can't walk out on that you can't walk out on that one of our friends uh, Jan Spindrup said it was kind of like that angels were there. You know, you just kind of sense that. And so I called back and I said, I didn't care about the sermon. I hoped they'd tape there. All I wanted was the music, and unfortunately they taped the sermon. You can get a sermon anywhere, but you can't get music like that everywhere. So looking again, just I'm thankful for the opportunity, Pastor, and all of you, and Judy. I think, I think you decided he came to come to our church on that Christmas Eve service, and all he did is, he didn't remember me. <laughs> I think he remembered the organ. And I say, praise God, whatever it took, I'd do it again. But what, I came across something that, again, a missionary wrote it. You've probably heard of it once or twice. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. C.T. Studd, missionary to, to China, missionary to Africa, sold everything, gave up everything, gave his total life for world missions. And I thought, uh, let's hear about this. Two little lines I heard one day, traveling along life's busy way, bringing conviction to my heart and from my mind would not depart. Only one life, which will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one life, yes, only one, soon will its fleeting hours be done. Then in that day, my Lord to meet and stand before his judgment seat. Only one life, it will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one life, the still small voice gently pleads for a better choice. Biding me selfish aims to leave and to God's holy will to cleave. Only one life, it will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one life, few brief years, each with its burdens, hopes, and fears, each with its clays I must fulfill, living for self or in his will. Only one life, it will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. When this bright world would tempt me sore, when Satan would have victory score, when self would seek to have its way, then help me, Lord, with joy to say, only one life. It will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Give me a purpose, Father, a purpose deep in joy or sorry, thy word to keep a faithful and true whate'er the strife. Please thee in my daily life, only one life, it will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Oh, let my love with fervor burn, and from the world now let me turn, living for thee and thee alone, bringing thee pleasure on thy throne. Only one life, it will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. Only one life. Yes, only one. Now let me say thy will be done. And when at last I hear thee call, I know I'll say, worth it all. Only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last.
Thank you, Pastor, for sharing. Appreciate that. In the back of your program, again, would you uh, look and find the song, When We All Get to Heaven? I invite you to stand as we sing this.
And so now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely. May your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, and he will 